Hello and welcome back to After Class. We will be continuing where we left off, which, if you recall, is after uh, having to entertain Mark and Gil because they were being super nosy and wanted to find out, you know, who um, the protagonist was staying with. Because apparently they found out that, oh, he has a roommate now. We have to find out who it is because, you know, because we're that annoying. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Things, they're going to find out who it is in this episode, unfortunately. But, oh well. Let's continue. Hmm. Shaken. Hmm. <laughs> what kind of dream is he having? <sighs> Good morning, world. Today is a great day because I don't have to go to school. Although, I should wake up and make my bed. You got up and started making your bed. While doing it, you noticed that your door was slightly opened. Hmm? Maybe Lars went in to get his clothes? I wonder where he's right now. Still not getting used to him staying over. Once you were done with your bed, you headed to the living room to look for Lars. Good morning. Ah, you're here. Morning. From the looks of it, he was about to leave the living room. Heading somewhere? Just gonna make some breakfast for us. What about you? Ah, uh, okay. Call me if you need some help. I'm gonna get some fresh air. That was a lie. You were totally looking for him, and you didn't know what you wanted to do with him. Ah, I do that every morning, too. Don't take too long, though. Breakfast will be ready before you know it. Okay. Ah, before I go. Hmm? Which would you prefer, bacon and eggs or waffles? Which one? I like both equally, but... Mm. Bacon and eggs. Ah, I see. I'll prepare that then. Okay, looking forward to it. Looks like I'll go and get some fresh air like I said I would. Ah, this isn't as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe I'll head to the front gate and look around a little bit. I never thought about it, but this place looks so pretty. And the air feels great too. I never got to enjoy it in the morning until now, thanks to school. Since Lars told you not to take too long, you stayed near your house. It seems like there was a lot of people walking around too, from kids to elders. No wonder almost everyone here was looking healthy and fit. Surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, you saw a familiar face, but there was something weird. Mr. Parker's there, but he doesn't look like he's doing his morning walk. Clearly, he was just passing by. He was probably heading to somewhere else. No, leave him be. Maybe now's not a good time. He looks like he's rushing, too. Soon after, Lars patted you from behind. Done with your morning walk? Ah, yeah, just finished not too long ago. Not really, you were just standing there the whole time, like a weirdo. Breakfast is ready, let's eat. It seemed like Lars was in a good mood. There was no real evidence of it, but you could feel it. How do you like the bacon and eggs? Mm, it's good. I like it. I'm so glad that you're here. Oh, I like it here too. Wait, what? I mean, I'm glad that you're here to cook me breakfast, or else I'd be eating bread and peanut butter today. I... Uh, no. <laughs> I'm glad I could help. I'm done with my breakfast. Ah, I'll finish mine ASAP. Ah, scarfing down my food like that wasn't a great feeling. You didn't have to, though. Well, anyway. Mm hmm? I'm gonna take a shower now. But you just finished eating. That's not good for you. Huh? Really? I didn't know that. Try waiting 30 to 45 minutes after any meal before showering. Eh, uh, but... No buts. Now go to the living room or somewhere else. I'll do the dishes. And maybe clean the house while I'm at it. Hmm, okay. What now? I'm bored. Not sure what you could do to ease your boredom. You turn the TV on. Ah, 
bored. I want to go out and take a walk. This isn't how my weekend should be. I'm supposed to be having fun. This uneventful Saturday got you feeling bored out of your head. You said that, but the day was only starting. Lars had been walking in and out between rooms. He was probably doing his work. At some point, he walked behind you to take out the trash. Once he was done, he went back to the kitchen. He sure keeps himself busy. I feel bad letting him do everything. Maybe I should ask if he needs help. Hey Lars! What is it? Do you need help with, you know, housekeeping? I'm good, thanks. I'm done anyway. Hmm, let me know if you need help next time. It's my house after all. Like I said, I stay here for free, so let me do the housekeeping for you. Alright, alright. Still, let me know, okay? I will. He walked closer towards you and sat down on the floor with a thud. I wonder if he's tired. Well, no shit, Sherlock. After cleaning a house this big, of course he was. After thinking about the most obvious thing, you look at him, but not in an obvious way. His hair was quite messy at the moment, and he was sweating through his shirt. For others, that might be quite an unpleasant thing to see. But for you, it was quite a treat, and let's not mention about his shirt because everyone agreed that those side nips were a blessing. He's looking so manly and dreamy. He caught you staring at him and tilted his head slightly. Why are you looking at me like that? You blinked twice and shook your head as you tried to come up with something that would make you sound less creepy. <laughs> no, let's ask if he's tired. Uh, nothing, just wondering whether you're tired or not. Heh. <laughs> Do I look like I'm not tired? Fair enough, you're sweating buckets. No, I'm sweating mostly water. You rolled your eyes. That was one of his dad joke moments. Well, in any case, you told me that you wanted to go out with me today, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I did. Did I really say going out? That sounds like we're boyfriends or something. I wouldn't mind, but still, this is too fast. Yes, you did say that. And yes, if it was true, it'd be too fast. That's not good for the plot. I don't think so. Why do you ask? I was just wondering if you wanted to go out with me tomorrow. I don't have any problem with that. Where do you want to go, though? I said that, yeah. I hope you didn't think poorly of it. You okay? Lars seemed to notice he's zoning out, so he asked if you were okay. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm okay. Just thinking about things. What kind of things? N nothing. I'm gonna hit the shower. You rushed to the bathroom before he got a chance to ask any more. After the shower was running, you leaned your head against the wall. What was I thinking? That was really dumb! You spent your shower time thinking about things that might or might not happen. Once you were done com contemplating, you headed back to your room and got dressed. It seemed like Lars had turned off the TV and headed outside. Curious, you exited through the main door and saw that he was stretching his body. You took a moment to appreciate his strong and well-defined back. What does he do, really? I couldn't tell that he was homeless from how he looks. Anyway, not really the time for that. You wanted to surprise him, but you remembered that he nearly clawed you the other day when you did. Bad idea. I'll just call him from a distance. Hey Lars, I'm done showering. It's your turn now. Why are you standing away so far? Just in case. Just in case. For what? I don't want to surprise you like I did the other day. Ah. He raises one of his eyebrows. Okay. I'll take a shower. You decide where to go. Will do. You sat down on the couch as instructed. You began to make plans for today while you waited for Lars. We're going to the city, and I don't know anything about it. Then how am I supposed to make plans? Maybe I should ask Mark? No, don't ask him. He's probably sleeping right now. I don't want to bother him. Plus, he's very annoying. I guess I'll do it impromptu style. 
you put your phone on the table and lie down in the couch for a little while. Maybe this will be a good opportunity to get to know him. He doesn't really tell me about himself. But then again, it is fair. We haven't known each other for long. Well, we're roommates, so I have to get to know him better. Operation Getting to Know Lars Start. You sure are looking excited. Eh? His voice surprised you, and you quickly got up from the couch. When did you finish? Not too long ago. Have you decided where you want to go? Well, I know we're going to the city, but... I don't have the slightest idea about what's there and what's not. Ah, that's fine. You can just look around the map. I'll probably help too. Ah, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I think it's settled. Ready whenever you are. I have everything I need with me. I'm ready to go. Let's head out. If you want to go to the city, head over to Publix. Ah, Publix. I'll keep that in mind. But why Publix? It's the nearest bus stop in the area. Hmm, there's one around the forest area, but no one really goes there. Oh, okay. Oh. I guess we're gonna go to Publix. So we just wait until the bus comes? Yeah. While waiting for the bus, both of you decided to go for a drink. There was a building next to Publix that said... Quality. Oh, quality. Well, not like it literally said quality, but there was a big board of some sort on the top of the building. My god, you're so stupid. You saw Lars rubbing his chin with an amused face. He must be enjoying the pun. Ignoring Lars for the moment, you saw that there were three sets of outdoor patios and no indoor drinking areas. They looked like they were settled in here recently, yet didn't look like a pop-up store. You approached the person behind the counter to place your order, and he greeted you with a cringe-worthy catchphrase. Where do you get your quality tea? At quality. That wasn't as great a catchphrase as I thought it'd be. Don't say it out loud. And it was crystal clear that the poor guy wasn't too eager about the catchphrase, either. Anyway, how can I help ya? Uh... Your brain suddenly drew a blank and you couldn't think of anything to order. Kiddo, you want recommendations? I suggest this one. Thank goodness he understood you. He showed you one of their special drinks. It was called bubble tea. Isn't that just normal tea with tapioca balls? Mmm, suppose. I haven't tried the tea myself. Anyway, people here usually get this one. Is he a foreigner? He speaks a little bit weird. Well, I'll get that one. How about you, Lars? I'll get the bubble tea. A guy who just passed by said something to the cashier. You should learn from that guy, Brooke. He pronounced it perfectly. He didn't say anything back to that guy, but you could hear that he mumbled something like, but they sound the same. It wasn't too clear, but you were sure that it was. I swear to God, that guy's getting on my nerves. <laughs> Sorry about that, kid. It's alright, I understand. I'd do the same if I were you. Just shake it off and you'll do fine. Haha, <laughs> I've been doing that. And here I thought I was being useful. You're a kind guy, kid. It's not often I meet someone like you. Oh, please, you're making me blush. Haha, <laughs> I'd like to chat with you some more, but I have to take your orders first. Speaking of which, is that all? Yeah. One moment then. He looked at you for a second before he wrote your order. What's your name, kid? Huh? My name? Heh, <laughs> it's for your order. Oh, what, uh, Lars. I, one for Lars and... Just Lars is fine. Alright then. Something feels weird. What's up with Lars? Ah, young people nowadays. He walked into the building to place your orders before going back to the counter. Feel free to sit anywhere while we prepare your orders. Don't mind if we do. Lars lightly pulled your hand and you had no choice but to walk with him. You wanted to ask him right away but you decided to wait until you were far enough from Brock. Hey, what gives? What do you mean? You're acting strange. Something wrong? He answered you, but he wasn't looking at you. No, everything is fine. I just didn't like him. 
Don't tell me. He's upset that I talked to Brock more than him? If he was... That's not right. I can talk to whoever I want. And why would that matter to him anyway? Your head was flooded with a series of what-if questions, and most of them were arguably nonsensical. Sometime later, Brock came with your drinks. Both of you finished the drinks as fast as you could because Lars told you that no food and drinks were allowed in the bus. Once you were done, you headed to the bus stop by Publix once again. However, it didn't arrive immediately. You had to wait another 10 minutes before the bus stopped by Publix. Finally, everyone got off the bus and everyone got on before you, making you and Lars the last people to get on the bus. Heh. <laughs> if I knew that they wouldn't be here earlier than now, I wouldn't have shoved everything in a go. I wanted to savor the tapioca ball some more. That was in the past, but at the moment, you had another problem. Well, not really a problem, just a minor inconvenience. Every seat was taken, and you were surrounded by the others. Eventually, the door closed and the bus started to accelerate. You didn't want to admit it, but this was your first time riding a crowded bus. Usually, your parents would take you anywhere, or they'd ask you to get a taxi or something. You looked at Lars, who was unfazed, as if it were a normal situation, which it was, but not for you, apparently. He noticed that you weren't holding any handholds. He tapped your back, signaling you to take his. Ah, that's fine, I'll just keep my- Blah! There was a sharp turn and you lost your footing. Luckily, you didn't nosedive onto the floor or do something embarrassing. At least, you didn't think so. But reality often messes with us. You plummeted into Lars's chest, and your face was literally sinking between his massive pecs. You swiftly and quickly moved your head away before everyone else noticed. Uh, sorry about that. But it was an undeniably soft and comfortable cushion for your fall. You thought, you definitely wouldn't mind crashing into his chest again. Heck, if you could, you make an excuse to make it happen. Weird thoughts, go away! I told you to hold it, I'll be fine. You had no choice but to do as he said, and everything felt much steadier. And about Lars, well, of course he'd be fine, because he put both of his paws on your shoulders, holding you tight. You feel him squeeze your shoulders occasionally. What was that for? Neither of you said anything, and you were too embarrassed anyway. You felt like he'd find out that your face was getting hot if you saw your face, so you kept your head down the whole ride. That was an interesting experience for you. Eventually, what felt like an eternity finally ended, and you arrived at the city with Lars. You looked around curiously, everything felt and looked so new. I wonder where we should start. Right, I wonder if there's a shopping mall nearby. Mm, oh, a shopping mall? He pointed his fingers directly at you, or rather behind you. You turned around and your eyes were greeted by one of the biggest shopping malls you've ever seen. Although, frankly speaking, you hadn't seen a lot of shopping malls to begin with. Wow. That's like Publix, but a Tarantamaxed version of Publix. What is Tarantamaxed? Oh, don't mind me, just a feature in the game. Like, Dynamaxed? Like from Pokemon? Well, there's a Publix inside this building. Wow, really? Yeah, do you want to head in? Sure. You made sure that you had your wallet and everything else you needed with you. Once you were done with your possession check, you went into the shopping mall with Lars. Why do you want to go here anyway? There was a reason for you to look for a shopping mall, but Lars didn't need to know about it. Just wanted to look around. Come on. All right, all right. I rushed in, but I forgot this place is so big. Something the matter? It seemed like Lars knew that something was up with you. He always asked you whenever you started to think harder than usual. You did say you wanted to look around, so we could start here if you want. Um, actually, know where I can look for phones? What kind of phones? Cell phones? Ah, it's on the second floor. Follow me. I'm starting to believe that he lied to me about not being too familiar with the city. Here it is. But what are you doing here? Looking for a new phone? 
Yeah, sort of. <laughs> sort of. It's not important. Let's go in. When you went in, you were greeted by the employees. They asked you if you needed help, and you told them that you were just looking around first. There were a lot of new phones on display, and a lot of them piqued your interest. But that wasn't why you were here. Lars was standing in front of one of the displays. It looked like he was appraising one of the VR goggles. Hey Lars, what is it? Let's say if you were getting a new phone, what would you look for? Uh, are you sure I'm the right guy to ask? That's a wrong sprite. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I will look at the brand first. If it was from a popular and reliable manufacturer, I'd consider it. Then the price tags. I don't want to buy a phone that would cost me a lot. I don't really care about the features. As long as I can make calls, text people, and browse the internet, I'm fine. I see, I see. Okay, thanks. Do you know any good manufacturers? Mm. The one that you're using, that's not a bad one. There's also e-phones, but they are really expensive. What do you ask? I just wanted your opinion, that's all. You look around some more while Lars wander around the store. You were waiting for the right time to execute your plan, and Lars made everything easier by going to the bathroom. What you were trying to do was get a phone for Lars so that you could contact him, plus a grown man without a phone or something to get in touch with others with... That didn't sound really fun. You asked your parents last night if it was okay to get Lars a new phone, and surprisingly, they didn't mind at all. You had a lot of money to spare anyway, they gave you too much spending money every month, and you usually didn't spend any, so it accumulated. Once you decided on which phone you wanted to give him, you called the staff so that you could purchase it. Lars came back not too long after everything was done. You told him that you had enough of the shopping mall and wanted to go somewhere else. So, what's our next destination? I don't know, do you have any suggestions? Hmm, what do you think about arcades? I like them. I don't go often, though. They have a lot of arcades here, but there's a popular one around here. Ah, okay. Mark's at the arcade, I recall. I wonder if he's also there. Let's see. There's a lot of things to do here, but I don't know if you're up for it. I'm cool with everything. I'm not picky. <laughs> After all, I got what I wanted here, so I would go home if I wanted to. Well, at least you look like you're in a good mood. Did you work here before, Lars? Uh, uh, yeah. I could show you where I used to work, if you want. Oh, there's a gym here, too. Come to think of it, I used to live around here back then. And Gilbert, too. Gilbert? Like Coach Gil? So they really knew each other. Speaking of Gil, I wonder if he's with his basketball team right now. Maybe we could visit him later on the way home? You've decided where you want to go? Huh? Uh, oh, well... Hmm. Let's be nosy and look at his old work. Er, this might be a little bit insensitive, but... It's fine. Let me take you there. Huh. But I haven't told you where I want to go. I know. You want to see where I used to work, right? Mm hmm? Funnily, once you started walking, you began to reconsider whether you wanted to go or not. Hey Lars? What is it? If we go there, what are we going to do? Good question. You can go inside. They allow people to look around if you say you're considering working there. That doesn't sound like a good idea. Or we could see that place and that'll be it. I'll think about it. And here we are. Oh, this place is nice. It is. Wait until you're inside. But if you're going, then you'll have to go by yourself. Huh? Why? They wouldn't be too happy if I showed my face there. Something tells me that he didn't leave work peacefully. Uh... Let's back off. You were terrified of heading in alone, so you let go of the idea. Let's head back. Oh, hesitating? Yeah, I don't want to go there alone. But we already came this far. 
If you want to go in with me, I'll go in too. Are you crazy? I'm not going in. But you didn't tell me why. I just didn't and don't want to talk about it right now. Ugh, you're no fun. Fine, we'll leave. Then anywhere else you want to go? Hmm, let's go to the gym. I don't want to meet up with Mark. I wonder where the gym is. You want to go there? Yeah, I'm curious. Er, uh, okay, I guess. Do you not want to go there? Uh, no, no. Then let's go. All right. It's been a long time since I came here. I think it was half a year ago. I don't remember. But I was sure that I went with Gilbert in the morning. Gilbert? Like Coach Gil? Yeah, that's him. I see. He's the only one who didn't change, don't you think? Huh? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Ah, uh, um, don't mind me. Oh, you're Lars? Placeholder. <laughs> oh, owner. It seemed like he was the gym owner. Boy, was he massive. Although, despite his intimidating looks, his voice was really soothing, and he looked like one of those people that would protect you from any harm. Basically, Lars, but a stronger fox version of him. That's supposed to be a fox? That look, kind of looks like a bear. That was interesting. You didn't see many buff foxes often. Where have you been? You suddenly stopped coming? We thought something bad happened to you. Well, I, uh... Lars was having a hard time forming a response to that, but the gym owner quickly came up with something reassuring. That's alright. You don't have to answer if you don't want to. Uh, thanks, owner. At least tell me how have you been? I haven't been doing so good, but I'm doing fine recently. That's good, at least. I hope it keeps going that way. And hopefully. Uh, who is this little fella over here? Little fella? He called me a little fella? That was a fair statement. He was a lot bigger than you. Uh, I'm Nero, Lars's friend. Nice to meet you, Mr... Owner? Haha, <laughs> I like him. He's got a nice sense of humor. It's not... I just didn't know his name. Well, I gotta run some errands, so if you'll excuse me. Oh, and Lars, you should tell us how you've been doing at least once in a while. Everyone was worried sick about you. Both you and Gil stopped coming suddenly, but even Gil had no idea where you went to. I'll... try. See you again, Lars. Nero. He gently lifted his arm to say goodbye and headed outside. What a nice guy. He really is. Hey, Nero. Hmm? Thanks for taking us here. Huh? Um, no problem? He ruffled your hair without telling you why, but you weren't complaining because you enjoyed it. Well, we're already here. What are you gonna do? I actually don't know. Maybe we can look around? No one goes to a gym to look around. Oh, dang. Really? Probably. As he looked around some more with Lars, he explained a lot of the things in this gym. And something quite interesting happened. Anders was here, exercising. You wondered if you should approach him or not. Nah. For some reason, you didn't feel like talking to him, so you didn't. He was too busy with his exercise. He didn't notice you walking past him. Since you decided not to talk to him, you told Lars that you had enough of touring around the gym. Already? Do you want to go anywhere? I think I'm done for now. Had enough of the city? Yeah, for now at least. Let's head back to the nearby bus stop. Okay. Did you have a good time today? Yeah, it was fun. I'm glad then. Do you have plans for tomorrow? I'm not sure. It's Sunday, so I think I'm gonna take it easy tomorrow. Sounds like a good idea to me. How about you? I don't have anywhere to go tomorrow. Maybe I'll just take it easy as well. That's nice. How about you? Did you have a good time today? Thankfully, the bus wasn't crowded this time. You had a lot of places to sit down, so you just picked a random seat. 
but for some reason, Lars decided to sit next to you, despite the bus being nearly empty. I hope you don't mind me sitting here. Uh, it's okay, don't worry. It is okay, but why is he so... close? I'm actually a little bit tired. Me too. We've been walking the whole day. Yeah. I'm ready to head home and have a nice warm shower. Me too. <laughs> the bus dropped you off in front of the Publix. There was a hint of comfort in your body when you arrived here. It was hard to explain. Ah, <sighs> it's really nice to be here. Yeah, it feels nice to be back here. I know, right? It's like we're really home. Well, I mean, we're still out here, but you know what I mean. Heh. <laughs> I'm home, finally. You can go shower if you like. I'll put our stuff back in your room. Ah, uh, but aren't you tired? I am, but not too much. Well, then don't mind if I do. But, oh, put the new phone here. I, I need it later. Gotcha. Ah, taking a shower after doing something tiring is the best. Lars was sitting on the couch, his back leaning against it, eyes closed. You gently touched his shoulder, telling him that you were finished showering. He opened his eyes slowly. It turned out that he was sleeping earlier. How tired was he really? He got up and rubbed his eyes while he yawned. How long have I been sleeping? Not too long, I just finished showering. Ah, okay. I guess I'll shower now. Take your time, Lars. I'll be here. Okay. You sat down next to where he would sit. You turned on the TV, letting it play in the background. In other words, you were wasting electricity. You reached for the new phone you bought this morning, and you inspected it for quite a while. Once everything was set up, you put it back onto the desk. You heard a sound of a door opening in the hallway. It sounded like Lars just finished showering. I'm done with shower. Haha, <laughs> I can see that. And you should wear your shirt. I can't stop staring at your body. Was what you wanted to say, but you didn't have the guts to tell him. About the phone. Ah, the weather is quite hot tonight, huh? Yeah, it is. He let out a smile and stopped asking about the phone. How considerate of him. Then, I have something to tell you. Hmm? What is it? I'm sure you've noticed that I had some kind of past in the city, so I'm going to tell you what happened. Huh? Uh, okay. He told you everything you needed to know about what happened that day. You learned that Coach Gill and Lars were good friends. That he was the same lecherous person as ever. That Lars once had a good life, and so on. At some point, your name got mentioned, but you didn't really pay attention to that because you're kind of stupid like that. He told you that Coach Gill almost did something weird to him, but he stopped before it got too weird. You didn't know why, but you felt a spark of jealousy when he told you that. At least it didn't last long. But judging from his current story, it was going nowhere, so you had to make sure. Wait a minute. I thought you were going to tell me how you got fired. I am. It was about to happen. Oh, hee hee hee. Continue. That was embarrassing. Anyway. He told you that the peaceful night turned into a nightmare for him. He got a termination of employment letter saying that he violated the company code of conduct, falsifying records, and etc. That was some serious violation there, but Lars didn't do any of that, at least from his story. What the heck? You saw him rolling his eyes before he asked you what happened. What is it? They terminated you just like that? Just like that, yeah. And you didn't do anything about it? I did, but you stopped me right before I was about to tell you again. Sorry about that, I just couldn't help it. How could they do that without any notice or at least consult you about it? I did call HR after that. And what happened? Heh. <laughs> I'll tell you sometime. It's quite late and I'm hungry. Eh, you can't just stop like this. He smiled and walked off to the kitchen. Come on, don't tease me like that. When you were about to follow him to the kitchen, you heard a knock from the other side of the door. Huh? 
Who could that be? Huh. What's Mark doing here this late? Ah, just leave him outside. Don't, don't open the door, dude. Hey, Mark. Yo. What are you doing here? It's late. Can I come in? Er, no. <laughs> yeah, sure, sorry. Oh, is that the guy that we were looking for yesterday? Ah. Lars, this is Mark. My friend. And I use that term very lightly. Best friend. Ew, no. God, no. Since when? And Mark, this is Lars, my boyfriend. <laughs> What's up with that hesitation? Is he your friend or not? Oh, could it be more than a friend? Please don't say weird things. Anyway, nice to meet you, Lars. He extended his arm, trying to shake Lars's hand. Ah, uh, likewise. They shook hands, but there was something off about it. Don't think you've won because you live in his place, okay? Anyway, what the fuck are you doing here, Mark? Ah, just telling you that we're going to the beach tomorrow. Huh? Yeah, won a raffle or whatever. They say it's okay to bring some friends. So I told Coach Gill, Mr. Stone, and Anders to come along with us. And I'm inviting you too, so be thankful, cat. Uh, sure. But everyone? You looked at Lars. He nodded at you as if to say it was okay. But there was still one thing that bothered you. Question. What is it? Why the beach? It's not summer yet. Well, shit. Don't ask me. It's what the ticket says. I guess that's fair. Well, I need to make dinner now, so I'll leave you be. Sorry, I can't help you out with dinner, Lars. It's alright. To your surprise, you heard someone knocking on the door. That was fast. Since you don't know who they are, you look through the window viewer, revealing Mr. Parker and the others. You welcomed them and asked them to come in. This was the first time your house was full of people. Mark moved a little bit. He was only several inches away from you, even though he could have sat down anywhere else. He didn't. Must be nice having someone to cook for you. Eh, a little bit. <laughs> How does it feel living under the same roof with him? It's been good. I got someone to clean things with me, and I get to eat balanced meals. <laughs> That's good then. At least he's being useful. <laughs> Don't say like that, you... Lars came back from the kitchen, calling everyone to have dinner together. You could see Mr. Parker and Coach Gills' eyes went wide, possibly surprised that Lars was in this house. It was clear to you that they had a lot of questions to be answered, but they didn't say anything. At least for now. Sweet. Going here was the right decision after all. Everyone followed you into the kitchen. Sorry, we didn't prepare to have a lot of food because you guys suddenly came here. It's fine. This is enough for us. Yeah. Did something happen between those three? Mark, observant as always. Sort of? Ha, huh. drama. Well, anyway, let's put everything aside and just enjoy the food for now. Everyone nodded and all of you ate dinner together. Everyone had finished eating their food, Mark being the one who finished his food first, went to the living room before anyone else did. He called for both you and Anders, probably leaving those three to solve their problem in a civil way. Mark, he could be a nice, understanding guy sometimes. No. no. That's the complete opposite of him. Well, Mark's calling us, so I'm gonna head to the living room. Let's go, Anders. Okay. Oh, here you are. I'm glad you two aren't that dense. I'm not dense. Me neither. Well, I'm glad you called us here, otherwise I wouldn't have left the kitchen. I was waiting for the signal. Well, 
It wasn't our problem to begin with, and if you ask me, I would say we shouldn't stick our noses into their business. You're like the most nosiest character in this entire visual novel. I I'm surprised you're not like up against the wall trying to listen, you stupid cat. I just hope that they can resolve it. Yeah, me too. I want to enjoy our trip peacefully. That sounds ideal. I've never gone out with my friends, so I'm thankful that you did invite me. Ha, <laughs> you're the same with Anders. He refused to go out a lot of times. I don't like going to the sea. But why? You'll be fine. You enjoyed a pleasant conversation with the two of them while letting the adults solve their own problems. Well, technically all of you were adults, but Lars, Coach Gill, and Mr. Parker were older than the three of you. And you managed to get Anders' phone number. Surprise, surprise. Alright, it looks like everyone is ready for bed. I'm sorry though, I wish I could get you guys mattresses, but I only have these quilts. This is more than enough, really. Yeah, I'm feeling very comfortable right now. Me too. That was because they weren't lying down on the floor. You were more worried about Coach Gill and Mr. Parker. Well, sorry you had to sleep on the floor, Coach Gill, Mr. Parker. Hey, <laughs> if you feel so bad, you could let me sleep with you in your bed. Bad idea. Sometimes, I can't believe that you're my teacher, Coach. Show some decency, Gill. What? I was just saying. Well... <laughs> Good night, everyone. You headed to the bedroom with Lars. Are you sure it's okay for me to sleep here? Yeah, my bedroom is quite spacious anyway. You sat down on the floor next to the bed. Hey, I want to see your new phone anyway. Huh? Oh, uh, about that. Are you sure it's fine for me to use it? Why not? You said that you wanted to get a new phone, but you ended up giving it to me. Ah, that was a lie. I said that so you wouldn't suspect me. Hmm. It's really okay. You need one so that I can text or call you when either of us needs it. Oh, it's also an unlocked phone. I don't know what that means, but I think it's good? Ah, okay. It just means that it can work with any phone carrier. Ah, I see. Okay. There's a new card in it too, so I'm set. And can I have your number? Yeah, sure thing. You exchanged phone numbers with Lars. At this time, you had all of your friends' phone numbers, including Coach Gill and Mr. Parker. Actually, when did I have Mr. Parker's number? I don't remember asking him. Oh well, it's not that important. After you were done with it, you climbed up the bed and told Lars that you wanted to go to sleep. Lars stood there, not doing anything. Err, uh, why are you still there? Come here. On the bed? Yeah, I'm not letting you sleep on the floor without something to cover you up. But I can do that just fine. No is no. Just come on, I want to wake up early tomorrow. Okay, don't mind if I do. It wasn't until he lay down next to you that you realized that it was really embarrassing to have anyone else sleeping in the same bed as you. Ah, this is so soft. I know, right? You turned around now facing him and immediately turned around again because he was too close for you. Mind turning off the light? Sure. Thanks, Lars. Don't mention it. I'm excited for tomorrow. It's going to be my first time going out with my friends, who I just met, like, literally six days ago. Yeah. He rustled around for a few seconds, and you wonder what he was doing. Apparently, he was taking off his shirt. You remember that he didn't sleep with his shirt on. You tried not to say anything about it. Ah. Uh, what is it? He went quiet for a brief second before he answered you. Nothing. Everything went quiet suddenly. All you could hear was a sound of crickets distant chirping. A drop of sweat dropped from your forehead onto the bed. Was it really that hot? Or was it just you? Best not to think about it. Thanks, Nero. Huh? What do you mean? I managed to meet everyone again, thanks to you. 
Ah, it's nothing. I'm glad everything is sorted out for you. Hmm. We should go to sleep now. Yeah. That was a lie. You wanted to talk more with him, but you couldn't think of anything. You closed your eyes, slowly drifting into sleep. Day 7, and that's where I'm going to leave it for today. Actually, the next episode isn't going to be Day 7. It's going to be, um... Uh... The Lars special episode. The one that appears in the... What's it called? In the main menu? Let's see if I can see it. Title screen. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Can't believe they still have the Christmas thing. This one. The Lars special episode where you get to find out what happened with his work. So we have a little bit more context. And I actually haven't done this one. I've done all of Lars's uh, current days. But I didn't do this one. So this is going to be new for me too. Yay. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what do you guys think? Do you think Mark is still as annoying as ever? Just butting in? And the ar if you go to the arcade, you do end up running into Mark. And he ends up being very antagonistic with Lars, and Lars is all competitive too. They do like a whole DDR dance-off type of thing, but Lars is terrible at it, and Mark is just, like, good. And he sets it up with where it's like, if I win, that I get to, you know, continue the day with the MC, the main character. But if you win, then, you know, I'll just back off. But of course he wins. But then he's like, hee hee, I was just kidding, you can go with him, whatever, Ew. But yeah, I, I hate Mark. I hate Mark. I know he's based off of Darius from what does it call them? What what did they? Uh, that that one other school related visual novel, and he's just as bad in that in that one. But um, he like tones down with a, like one of his dates tries to kill him, and I hope that somebody tries to kill Mark eventually and maybe succeeds. <laughs> um, but um, yeah. Anywho. So anyways, what did you guys think? Uh, oh, there was a little bit of possessiveness by Lars when you guys were getting, well, when the MC and Lars were getting the bubble tea and where I guess Lars thought that the other guy was like hitting on the main character and like he takes a hold of him. Also, he gets a little possessive in the arcade, I think. And I think... Mm, that's going to be sort of like a pattern with him where he's like a little possessive, but he like tries to control it. But he it starts to become a little bit more noticeable, especially during the, the trip. But yeah, you guys will get to see that later. Anywho, um, thank you all for watching slash listening. If you would like to play After Class yourself, uh, you can find it over on Itch. And I'm pretty sure that the creator has a direct link to his Itch page on his Twitter. So I'm going to link to that. And I will also link the Patreon in case, you know, you want to support the project. And I guess that's it for now. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye-bye.